Have you ever been in a place where you know you want to lose weight, but you lack the confidence about if you can stay motivated to do it and what will life be like in the process? Let's talk about how to open your mind to reprogramming for change, success, and freedom so that you can design a weight loss journey that empowers you and keeps you feeling motivated. I'm Lucy Laramie, and this is Weight Loss Made Possible. I'm here to inspire and guide you to create a weight loss journey that energizes your inner power and ignites your life. Three, two, one, let's go. Ain't no limit. Tell them there ain't nothing stopping you. Taking off. Weight loss made possible. Plenty ups and downs, but she won't fail. Lucy, show them how to reinvent yourself. They say life is a challenge and you can't overcome it. It don't matter what happens. You ain't stopping for nothing. Do it like a boss. Hey, you know what we about to do? Take off. Weight loss made possible. Let's go. Want to learn how to lose weight from someone who has done it before? Subscribe now. You know how if you drop a petal into water, it can send a ripple effect through the water? A weight loss journey can be just like that. Sometimes you have no idea how far reaching the effects of what seems like small changes. And when you don't immediately see the impact of the changes, you can find yourself wondering, am I wasting my time? In a world where it can feel like there isn't enough time, this is a valid question. In fact, a study conducted in London that polled 2,000 people concluded that the average person wastes 26 days per year. And that's more than double the number of vacation days that the average American worker gets. The average employee gets just 11 days of vacation. And the issue of balancing time and effort was on my mind often during my weight loss journey. Like, Is all of this effort going to end up being a massive time suck that gets me nowhere and ends in a lot of embarrassment if I don't accomplish what I intend? And sometimes when my mind would go down rabbit holes, often propelled by fear, I would find myself asking people close to me things like, am I different now? Have I changed? Am I better? Was I really that way? As my body changed, there were often moments that I still felt and thought like a fat girl just in a smaller body. And when I'd ask for feedback from people close to me, the response was usually positive. Yet there was sometimes still doubt. Like, are people just telling me what they think I want to hear so that they don't hurt my feelings? You find yourself contemplating if the feedback you receive is accurate. And this battle in your mind between what is real and what is not can create a massive roadblock on the journey. However, there was one day on my journey when I was struck by how profound that ripple effect was out of continuing to throw a pebble into the water, even if it didn't always land where I wanted. This is what happened that really made me say, wow. As a child, my family ventured on many road trips. When you take a road trip in the United States, there are often long stretches of complete nothingness where everything just looks the same. And one of my favorite parts of the trips was counting down the miles to the next city. There was a sense of excitement about seeing the city skyline come into view. And I developed a sense of fascination with the creativity of architecture. 
So naturally, it was on my bucket list to want to live in a high rise building where I could see the city view. This goal was accomplished when I moved to Atlanta. My condo was situated one floor below the penthouse level with a north facing view of the city. When I relocated to Atlanta, the area was fairly underdeveloped and I spent a fair amount of time looking out at the city and watching the skyline unfold and the city develop. More than 20 properties were developed from the view out of my window during the time I lived there. When I first moved in, I could see the interstate wind through the center of the city, and by the time I left, it was not visible at all. Being so high up there was a sense of quiet and removal from the hustle and bustle, yet the city would also live and breathe around you. And one afternoon, there I was, curled up on the sofa in front of the large floor-to-ceiling windows in my condo with a cup of coffee, wasting time on my phone. But this was about to be a time that I would never set my phone down the same again. To me, most phone updates are mundane, and I don't really pay attention to them. Apple had released a feature that helped users to find and identify people in photos on iPhone. When I opened the Photos app, I was prompted to identify and label photos of people I knew so that my phone could categorize them to find... to make finding and searching for photos easier. Seems like a handy feature, right? I looked at the list of people. Okay, that's my grandma. Okay, that's my cousin from her wedding. But the next eight pictures, they were all of me and I was shocked. My face had changed so much over the course of my weight loss journey that the phone software was recognizing me as eight different people. There was part of me that questioned feedback from people close to me about change, but there it was on my phone in living color. And the thing is, we never know when that aha moment or the breakthrough is coming, but we had to keep going and believe that that moment is coming. That day, I set my phone down and got up from that couch I walked back into the world with a completely different perspective of myself. And the question is this. When you look in the mirror, what do you choose to see? If you see anything other than opportunity, it's an indicator that fear is sabotaging your thought process. Yet so many of us, myself included, have looked in that mirror and seen shame. When we see shame, the narrative in our head becomes the most difficult part of the journey if we let it run unchecked. Brene Brown offers this quote that sums it up very well. She says, shame corrodes the part of us that believes we are capable of change. There are over 8 million species on Earth and only three can consistently recognize themselves in the mirror. Do you know which three those are? Orangutans, chimpanzees, and humans. This ability to self-reflect changes everything for humans and is a driving force for the human species to dominate the planet. When you struggle with your weight or self-esteem, looking at your reflection can feel more like a challenge than an advantage sometimes, right? Mirrors can show growth and potential and they can also reflect parts of yourself that you're not proud of. It's important to look at your reflection to keep evolving and yet taking 
taking a peek at yourself can be triggering. You ask yourself, you ask yourself, can I achieve my deepest desires? Do I deserve to get exactly what I want? The problem is, if you allow fear to answer that question, your mind can turn against you and become a roadblock in the journey. It can be tempting to find comfort in channeling that fear into fantasizing about the what if. What if this? And what if that? Your mind can go on a journey all its own. And why that's such a big deal is because if you get lured into the comfort of channeling that fear into fantasizing about the what if, yet not taking action, the risk is failure to consciously build your future self, whereby you're stuck daydreaming about how awesome things could be while letting the audacity and accountability to claim it and step into your true power slip away. And the problem with slipping into daydreaming and not taking action is that when you stick your head in the clouds, so to speak, the result is a lack of awareness. And when you lack the understanding that is born from awareness, the temptation is to cherry pick the explanation of your choice. This is how ignorance in ourselves is bred and brought into the world. At all times, we are the product of understanding or the lack thereof. And when we choose to walk away from understanding because what it takes to understand appears to be too much hard work, the result is a society constructed of half-truths. These false narratives and half-truths choke our dreams because our lives always revolve around the narratives we believe. If we reject self-reflection because it is a humbling process, the result is that we will lack humility. It's essential that we find out why we think, say, and do certain things if we want to better ourselves. This oftentimes requires us to swim against the status quo. But we have become three in more than eight million species by avoiding our own reflection. We aren't here to catch up to the status quo. We are here to invent the status quo. We must normalize humility, accountability, and self-awareness. When you take a hard look at yourself and your life, it's critical to ask. What am I normalizing in my life? Is this what I want? The truth is that this hard look is critical to unlocking the extraordinary and shutting down the mediocre in your life. There is an understanding that it's important to take a hard look at yourself and your life. But when literally a thousand things can happen in any given week, and there can be so much noise in your head, how do you do it and do it effectively? How do you sort which experiences are most significant and worthy of scrutiny? Three things are worth paying attention to. Things that surprise you, things that frustrate you, and things that fail. There is no doubt that surprise, frustration, and failure offer the biggest opportunities for growth and to rebuild a better version of yourself and your life. Changing how you talk to yourself, dealing with these three things, and letting go of the rest will help you succeed in your journey. 
Until next time, don't give up on the journey. It's challenging, but it's worth it. See you next week.